Have you ever noticed why Catholic church buildings have three distinct parts? That's what we're going to talk about today. So Catholic churches have three distinct parts. Now this isn't because our architects are uninspired, but it is a good question, right? I mean, why do churches have three parts and not one big part? Or why not five or ten or whatever? In the Bible, God loves to create the whole world in three parts. Book of Genesis, very beginning, God creates the seas, and then the land, and then the heavens, right? Three parts. Go to the next section, how does God create the world? He creates all of the world, then he creates Eden, and then he creates a third part in Eden to the east, right? This garden. Take the Jerusalem temple, architectural plans God gives to Moses. Finally, uh, he gives it to Solomon, the son of David, to build the temple in Jerusalem. Guess what? It had three parts. The very first part was the court of the Gentiles, where, where really anybody could go. Then there was this holy place in the middle that was called the Hekal. It's where the Jews could go. And finally, there was this third extremely holy place that was um, a cube. And it was called the Debir, or the Holy of Holies. That's where only the high priest could go once a year. Again, three parts. It symbolizes a new heavens and a new earth. The very beginning is a transition away from a fallen world into this architectural image of a new glorified world. Even the temple in Jerusalem had these things that looked like glorified trees. In the Holy of Holies, it was an image of heaven. There was a lot of gold, and that's where the Ark of the Covenant was. And it was dark in there. Um, like you couldn't see. It was like beyond human sight, symbolizing heaven. A Catholic church has those three same parts. The idea is that in Christ's great work of redemption, his suffering, death, and resurrection, his ascension into heaven, he has restored the world, and that work of redemption has begun, and now is pressing forward to its conclusion. It's the perfection of everything God has created. The reason this is good news for us is this. The world can be a depressing place. I mean, you look at the newspaper, you look at your life, you look out at the world, and you see things are broken. There's violence, there's exploitation. The world seems like it's not the way it should be. But the Catholic Church is meant to be a sign of God's perfection of the world through the work of redemption of Christ. Like we enter, we leave the fallen world behind us. We go through the vestibule of the church. We remind ourselves of our baptism with the holy water, which brings us into the beginning of this new world we call the church, which is where you see images of sometimes tall columns that remind you of trees. You see images of people, saints, right? All these things from earth. But then we gaze into this architectural image of heaven. Where, what do you see? A priest, a high priest, who's clothed in these glorious garments, and he sits down, right? It's no accident. Christ sits at the right hand of the Father. The priest enacts that symbolically and sacramentally. Then what does he do? He stands and he prays. He, he prays for the whole world. He offers himself in sacrifice. This is my body given for you. This, these great mysteries that you cannot see being reenacted, being represented sacramentally and symbolically. The church building is like a living piece of sacred art that we enter into to experience this so that it changes us. When I started to experience Catholic churches in this way, I started to see the church isn't random in how it's built. These three parts are communicating something so beautiful and so important that God's dream and what he brings about through the death and resurrection of Christ is to make his world beautiful. And that's what I was seeing and to this day continue to see in the architecture of the Catholic churches.